Martin, please. Stand aside, Martin. No, oh, you don't, Ethan. Ethan, no, you don't! Stand aside. Looks like you got yourself surrounded. Yeah, and I figure on getting myself unsurrounded. Ten favorite movies of baby boomers. As I sit around, scratching my ass, trying to think about what to do next as a video, I came across a list of baby boomers' favorite movies. As a baby boomer myself, it caught my interest. This is a shaved down list today. Also, not my personal choice, although I agree with some. If you guys like it, I will follow up with some more, as usual. Of course, there are some westerns in this eclectic group. I hope you enjoy this video. Hit the subscription button to get my new videos. To check out my many other videos, head to my channel. The link is in the description. Without further ado... The Big Country, 1958, and Shane, 1953. The Big Country is an epic western, directed by William Wyler, starring Gregory Peck, Gene Simmons, Carol Baker, Charlton Heston, and Burl Ives. The supporting cast features Charles Bickford and Chuck Connors. The picture was based on a serialized magazine novel, Ambush at Blanco Canyon, by Donald Hamilton. To the prairies where the air is gun smoke. Power packed with a huge star cast. Gregory Peck, as the stranger who came to the big country to tame a sea of sun, sand, and violence. Gene Simmons as the girl who stood proud and alone. Carol Baker of Baby Doll fame as the woman of uncontrollable love hungers. Charlton Heston in his biggest role since the Ten Commandments as the ruthless ranch foreman. Burl Ives as the fierce, proud buccaneer of the plains. Charles Bickford as the unrelenting range baron. What do you want, Hennessy? You set foot in Blanco Canyon once more? And this country's gonna run red with blood till there ain't one of us left. Now, I don't hold mine so precious, so if you want to start, here. <laughs> start now. Mr. Leach, I knew exactly where I was all the time. You're a damn liar. Well, if it's a fight you're looking for, you picked the right time for it. Don't you care what people think? No. Don't you care what I think? Do you like to have people think that you're... Coward, why don't you say it? Are you afraid of the word? I'm not. And I'm not going to spend the rest of my life demonstrating how brave I am. Do I make you sick? Do I? Shane is a western starring Alan Ladd, Gene Arthur and Van Heflin. The film is noted for its landscape cinematography, editing, performances and contributions to the genre. The picture was produced and directed by George Stevens from a screenplay by A.B. Guthrie Jr. based on the 1949 novel of the same name by Jack Schaefer. ...is matched by the stature of its moving human drama. Drama that began when a mysterious stranger rode in from out of nowhere to play a decisive role in the lives of these rugged pioneers. You call me Shane. Shane, who attracted the woman with his quiet strength, who fascinated the boy with the glint of his gun. We'd all be much better off if there wasn't a single gun left in this valley. A gun is as good or bad as a man using it. From the clash of elemental forces, George Stevens has created a motion picture unforgettable for its spectacle and scope, its great human story, its deadly conflict. I've heard about you. What have you heard, Shane? I've heard that you're a low-down Yankee liar.
The Bridge on the River Kwai, 1957, based on a true story, one of the greatest World War II epics ever made, shot in what is now Sri Lanka for just $7 million, now recognised as one of the greatest films ever made, the highest grossing film of 1957, and received positive reviews from critics. The film won seven Academy Awards, including Best Picture, at the 30th Academy Awards. Do not work hard. You will be punished. Go on without me. That's an order. You make me sick with your heroics. There's a stench of death about you. You carry it in your pack like the plague. You and that Colonel Nicholson, you're two of a kind. Crazy with courage. For what? How to die like a gentleman. How to die by the rules. When the only important thing is how to live like a human being. My name is Nicholson. Give me the book. Well, by all means. You read English, I take it. Do you read the Japanese? I'm sorry, no, but if it's a matter of precise translation, I'm sure that can be arranged. You see, the code specifically states that the... Kill him! Kill him! I could have done it. I was ready. Let's go. The bridge on the River Kwai played against the naked canvas of war. Here is a vast panorama of human emotions, the courage and dignity of men who fight for their convictions, the humor of soldiers in the midst of tragedy. I thought you were the enemy, sir. Well, I'm an American, if that's what you mean. The tenderness that springs from the heart. You're lovely. The beauty and brutality that is war on an island in the jungle. <laughs> on the River Kwai is a motion picture achievement by a combination of brilliant creative talent. The Magnificent Seven, 1960. A western directed by John Sturgis. A remake in an Old West style of Akira Kurosawa's 1954 Japanese film Seven Samurai. The ensemble cast includes Yul Brenner, Steve McQueen, Charles Bronson, Robert Vaughan, Brad Dexter, James Coburn and Horst Butchholz as a group of seven gunfighters and Ella Wallach as their main antagonist. The seven title characters are hired to protect a small village in Mexico from a group of marauding bandits led by Wallach. Solving your problems isn't our line. Curtain moved. I'm not in a good position. Let him stick his neck out. Call it. Seven magnificent men in one magnificent motion picture. The Magnificent... How much money that cost? Huh? Huh? He had a town at his mercy. Seven Days in May, 1964. A political thriller about a military political cabal's planned takeover of the United States government in reaction to the President's negotiation of a disarmament treaty with the Soviet Union. Starring Burt Lancaster, Kirk Douglas, Frederick March and Ava Gardner. Directed by John Frankenheimer. Based on the novel of the same name by Fletcher Niebel and Charles W. Bailey II. Prola Colonel, a peddler, you sell information. Are you sufficiently up on your Bible to know who Judas was? Yes, I know who Judas was. He was a man I worked for and admired until he disgraced the four stars on his uniform. Seven days in May, when a Marine colonel wondered who was inciting screaming mobs in Madison Square Garden. We want that! We want that! We want that! That uncovered secret meetings in Washington's back alleys. When unknown men prepared to kidnap the president from his private vacation resort. That brought a secret presidential messenger to death in a plane crash in Spain the day a senator of the United States was held against his will. 
when a woman found her past being used for blackmail. Look, Ellie, if I could tell you why... I I'll tell you this, something. You don't understand. I was a stupid, impressionable female who let an Air Force general use her like his personal airplane. The discovery of a desert base for an airborne task force, kept secret even from the President of the United States. When the head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff dared the President of the United States to stop the conspiracy that couldn't be proved. You're not a weak sister, Mr. President. You're a criminally weak sister. You say I've duped the people, General. I've built them, I've misled them, I've stripped them naked and made them defenseless. You accuse me of having lost their faith, deliberately and criminally shut my ears to the national voice. I do. Well, where the hell have you heard that voice, General? In freight elevators? In dark alleys? In secret places in the dead of night? How did that voice seep into a locked room full of conspirators? That's not where you hear the voice of the people, General. Not in this republic. And I will not resign voluntarily. I'm going to fight you. And then we'll see which one of us the United States is willing to fight. The Searchers, 1957. A western directed by John Ford, based on the 1954 novel by Alan LeMay. Set during the Texas Indian Wars. Stars John Wayne as the middle-aged Civil War veteran who spends years looking for his abducted niece, Natalie Wood, accompanied by his adopted nephew, Jeffrey Hunter. John Wayne is Ethan Edwards, who had a rare kind of courage, never thinking of himself as brave. So we'll find him in the end, I promise you. We'll find him. Here is a story of a man, hard and relentless, tender and passionate. What do you want me to do, draw your picture? Spell it out? Don't ever ask me. As long as you live, don't ever ask me more. Go, Martin, please. Stand aside, Martin. Oh, no, you don't, Ethan. Ethan, no, you don't! Stand aside. Looks like you got yourself surrounded. Yeah, and I figure on getting myself unsurrounded. Spartacus, 1963. An epic historical drama directed by Stanley Kubrick, starring Kirk Douglas in the title role. A slave who leads a rebellion against Rome and the events of the Third Servile War. The film also stars Laurence Olivier as a Roman general and politician, Marcus Licidius Crassus, Charles Lawton, Peter Ustinov, and John Gavin as Julius Caesar. Gene Simmons played Spartacus's wife, Verinia, a fictional character, and Tony Curtis played the fictional slave, Antonius. Relive history's most exciting and inspiring drama. Slave, gladiator, invincible fighter, symbol of Rome's majesty and might. I'm not after glory. I'm after Spartacus. Whose body was bought and sold but whose love enveloped Spartacus with a radiance few men have known. I love you, I love you. Leader of the Roman Senate, previous dealer in human flesh, to staff officer. In the powerful story of the gladiator rebel who sprang from slavery to challenge the awesome might of Imperial Rome. The symbol of the Senate, all the power of Rome. I imagine a god for slaves. What do you pray for? I pray for a son who will be born free. Dr. Strangelove, 1964, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb, known simply and more commonly as Dr. Strangelove, is a political satire, black comedy, Written, produced, and directed by Stanley Kubrick, starring Peter Sellers in three roles, including the title character. The film which satires the Cold War fears of a nuclear conflict between the Soviet Union and the United States also stars George C. Scott, Sterling Hayden, Keenan Wynn, Slim Pickens, and Tracy Reed, and is loosely based on the thriller novel Red Alert, 1958, by Peter George. historical at a moment like this. Doomsday 
Rebel Without a Cause, 1955, a coming-of-age romantic drama about emotionally confused suburban middle-class teenagers, directed by Nicholas Ray. It offered both social commentary and an alternative to previous films depicting delinquents in urban slum environments. Stars James Dean, Natalie Wood, Sal Mineo, Jim Backus, Anne Doran, Corey Allen and William Hopper. Dennis Hopper made his film debut in a small role. I love you, Jim. I really mean it. No! No, I don't want you to go to the police. There were other people. Why should you be the only one involved? But I am involved. We are all involved. Mom, a boy, a kid was killed tonight. <laughs> this is all going too fast you for me, You better give me something... You better give me something fast. Jimmy, you're very young. A foolish decision now could wreck your whole life. In ten years, you'll never know this even happened. Dad, answer her. Stand up! Do you want to kill your own father? Gary! <laughs> Raiders of the Lost Ark, 1981, an action-adventure film directed by Steven Spielberg from a screenplay by Lawrence Kasdan, based on a story by George Lucas and Philip Kaufman, set in 1936, stars Harrison Ford as Indiana Jones, a globe-trotting archaeologist vying with Nazi German forces to recover the long-lost Ark of the Covenant, which is said to make an army invincible teaming up with his tough former romantic interest, Marion Ravenwood, Karen Allen. Jones races to stop rival archaeologist Rene Belloc, Paul Freeman, from guiding the Nazis to the Ark and its powers. Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? I'm going after that truck. This up as I go. Trust me. Easy Rider, 1969, an independent road drama written by Peter Fonda, Dennis Hopper, and Terry Southern. Produced by Fonda and directed by Hopper. Fonda and Hopper played two bikers who traveled through the American Southwest and sell, carrying the proceeds from a cocaine deal. Yeah, look, the success of Easy Rider helped spark the new Hollywood era of filmmaking during the early 1970s. I got to see her see uh, scissor happy beautify America thing going on around here. They're trying to make everybody look like you. Hey, you got a rug? Hey, mister, can you tell where a man might find a bed? I never really thought of myself as a freak, you know? But I loved a freak. No, man. This is grass. You mean marijuana? Look like a bunch of refugees from a gorilla love in. Oh, I just can't believe. What are they doing here? I don't never know, but I don't think they'll make the parish line. Hey, oh, look at them green. Hold on, Sam. We'll scare the hell out of them. They're not scared of you. They're scared of what you represent to them. Amen. Oh, we represent to them, man, as somebody who needs a haircut. Oh, no. What you represent to them is freedom. What the hell's wrong with freedom, man? That's what it's all about. If you want to see all my new videos as they come up, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Catch all my other videos by looking at my channel. The link is in the description. Leave me your comments. Check out my Facebook page as well. Like and share. I am Wrangler. Adios. See you again soon.
interesting facts about famous people.